saying today because most of what I have to say it doesn't really go to uh, uh, everybody everybody doesn't get it and I have to say this first at the beginning as a disclaimer because most people believe that 
philosophy, spiritual knowledge, things of this category, science even, is for everybody. And what I'm here to explain first is that true spiritual knowledge, as or what I would just label philosophy in and of itself, is connected to a certain character. Today we live in a consumer-driven world where everyone feels that everything is for them. That you can walk down the street and purchase Buddhism, purchase Christianity, purchase Judaism, purchase Islam. You can go into a mall and purchase any culture in the world in a mall. The clothing that used to be sacred to certain cultures are just in the mall now. They're at Walmart. We don't realize how much of sacredness we trample on every day in a capitalist society. I should say colonial. In a colonial society, crime is made normal. And so when you're really talking about building civilization, the first thing you got to deal with is to know the difference between right and wrong, real and fake, cause and effect. This was the essence of philosophy. Not René Descartes, Aristotle, Socrates, no. These people were observers of the true wise beings that walk this earth. The greatest Greek philosophers were only observers. And I say that not to discredit them at all or, you know, any of that. It's the truth. Take, for instance, by that. Pythagoras, and you see the Pythagorean theory. Pythagorean theory. But every time they show you the Pythagorean theory, they show you a pyramid. The triangle or the pyramid, it, after it's built, is the symbol most likely used in Greek philosophy to explain the Pythagorean theory. Yet, the pyramid that the Greeks are holding are 5, 000, is 5,000 years older than the entire Greek civilization. Why do I bring this up? Because you can't tell a lie without telling a little bit of the truth first. But if you don't have the truth within you, you can't see it. Most people are looking for truth with lies inside of them. So you can't see it. it the, the lie looks normal. So what's the difference between the real and the fake? Let's start right here. Because in order to build civilization, you got to be a civilization builder. Boom. Everybody's not a civilization builder. Spiritual knowledge Philosophical knowledge is reserved for the kings, women included. She has said kings, women included. We just got around to that in 2022, you know, the movie Woman King and all that. But those of us that study, we already know. Women being kings. In fact, in our uh, tradition, in African tradition, you was called the Kandake, queen mother. The king, when the word king, we were called negus, negus nagas, men were called negus or negus nagas, negus king, negus nagas, king of kings. These terms, king and queen, are English. They don't mean anything. Let me say it again. These terms, king and queen, although we use them, yes we do. We know what we mean when we say them. But as philosophers, as those with the truth, you got to ask yourself, what is the real of this? And what, is, what am I calling myself? 
I wish I had my PowerPoint up here. I would show you the Oxford English Dictionary. Save you a long story. The etymology of the, of the word queen means whore. Yes, let me say it again. The etymology of the word queen, Q-U-E-E-N, is whore. Q-U-E-A-N is the original spelling of the word Q-U-E-A-E-E-N. Q-U-E-E-N. Queen. But this word comes from Q-U-E-A-N. Queen. And that word means whore. And why was the queen a whore? Because the English queen or the European, I'm sorry, the European king, that's all he ran with. I'll say it again. The English king, even the European king, kings, they had no wives like you would think today. These were serial rapists if you really want to talk about it. These were not men of honor. What we call the king of England, the king of this and all them European countries. No, these were gangsters. There was no family involved in this. So the woman he took on was a bunch of, among a bunch of women, really. They just wanted to be down with the king. <laughs> now we adopt the language. And what happens? We start stepping on our own sacredness. Because we don't know the difference between the real and the fake. Philosophy gives you the ability to see the real and the fake. This way you could go with the real. Think about this. The key to success is to be right. Just take that in for a minute. Because these are simple equations. The key to success, you say, I want to be successful at whatever I do. Whatever it is, I want to be successful. The key to success is to be right. You got to have the right answer. You got to make the right move. You got to be the right person. If you fail at any of this, you don't get success. Most people think they can have success doing wrong. Most people think they can have success with the wrong answer. How do you get to success? I got the right answer. The minute you got the right answer, you're successful. In fact, nature itself is successful. It is human beings that put obstacles in their own way. If you would leave yourself alone, you would arrive right to where you want to be. If you just left yourself alone. And how do you leave yourself alone? Well, how do you bother yourself? <laughs> You bother yourself with doubt. You bother yourself with worry, with fear. And these things are real. Worry, doubt, fear. Sometimes you gotta fear things. A lion, some beast jumps out of that woods. You know, fear might save your life. As <laughs> fear might save your life in that instance. But the fear I'm talking about is when you know you're better than something, but you doubt yourself, and so the fear comes. Meaning, I'll put it this way. Everybody in this room, right? In this room. <laughs> Everybody in this city right now. This city. This place. Everybody in this nation right now. If you're here, you're a survivor. Just stop there. See, these are the simple things of nature that takes away the wrong, leads you to the right. Simple things. If you're, if you're here right now, you survived COVID. If you're here right now, you, have, you survived at least four American wars. If you're here right now, you're surviving social unrest for the last 10 years. Social unrest. The Constitution calls for domestic tranquility, law broken. You survived that. You
you survived that. Now, most people doubt that. Or most people downplay, well, I'm just me, man. I'm just here. So what? You're... This is where the weakness comes. You're not giving yourself the strength you deserve for surviving. You're not giving yourself the award for being here right now. You know so many people in this very state of North Carolina are lost. I'm not criticizing. No, I'm not. Stating a fact. You could go downtown right now and see lost people. And to make it worse, government officials are walking past them. Think about this. You have control and charge of a city. You drive the city like everybody else. You going over the same pothole every day and you the city official. I bump over the, the hub, the next guy bump over the hub, and you, the city official, bumps over the same hump. It's your responsibility to get this hump out the street. Or the homeless off the street. Or the mentally challenged off the street. But we sit and we watch it. Why? Well, there's two answers here. One is that it's deliberate and this is the system. The other is that people are too intellectually lazy to do anything about it. And both are working. Why do I bring this up? Come back to civilization. If you don't know the real from the fake, the fake is all you got. This is what leads to failure. I don't have the right answer. I don't have the right path. People look at me. KRS one. Man, he's successful. No, I'm not. I never, to this day, I don't feel successful. You ask anybody that you think is successful or you think is a star in that way, ask them, do you feel like you made it? Most will say no. And you'll say, but you did fit six movies. You you got the Oscar. You, you did the da da da. The key to success is that you never make it. <laughs> you never get there. It's been 35 years for me. I've been ripping the mic for 35 years. Oh, don't clap for that. Because I have not made it. I'm still hungry. And most people who love their craft never make it. Because you never reach that place where you say, well, this is, I, I, I got what I wanted and I'm out. You never, you didn't enter this to get something. You entered this to be something. So at the end of the day, if you enter this to be something, it is immortal on you. You are constantly being it and wanting to be it and move around as it. And this is what it is. Paid, no pay. Up, no down. Down to the side, whatever it is. It's called being. Being is the most important. This is why I start in this area. I'll give you a few contrasts between real and fake. And, and certain fake stuff is right in your face. But the question is, is, are you being real? When fakeness is right there in your face. And I'm not talking about opinions. Oh, I got an opinion about this. Or I, I don't like that. So I think we ain't talking about that. We're talking about straight lies. Hey, okay, here's one. Uh, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Still not passed. Now when the bottles were going through police cars and the Exxon station was on fire. Hey, you're burning down your neighborhood. Oh, you gotta stop. What are you doing? What's your grievance? There's no justice. We got this bill 
called the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. This might do something toward what we face in the streets every day. The bill never passed. President Biden ran on this. The bill never passed. What continued was more killing of black people by police. That continued. 200 more murders, you know, after George Floyd. 200 more murders. Now, we as intelligent people look at that and what do we do? We still believe in the system. It's going to work for us. The system, it's just him. It's one bad apple. When are we going to wake up? Really? And see, this is what philosophy gives you. It offers you the mind that can perceive truth. You know the real from the fake. What's the real? They lying to us. Straight up. There's no way around it. There's no way to it. They're lying. Now you as a seeker and a lover of truth, what do you do in the face of a liar? They telling you lies. You gonna sit there and listen? You gonna sit there and agree? You don't even really even have to protest it. The real crime here is if you accept it. That, that's, this is the, and this is what we're doing. Juneteenth is coming up. What a wonderful day that is in consciousness. It says so much about the state of African Americans today in the United States. It says so much. Juneteenth. Dudes in Texas didn't even know they were free. Civil War been won. They still slaving. These Texas races got them, got black folks still slaving. And they know you free. But you don't know. Mm, mm, mm. They know you free, but you don't know you free. So you keep working.